Hello everyone and welcome to the Muscle Car Appraisal YouTube channel. It's been quite a while. We thank you for stopping by to watch our latest video. Today we have a special car and a little special introduction for the video. I'm here in the Muscle Car Garage with a 1970 and a half Pontiac Trans Am and a Super Sport sign. Obviously, this is not a super sport, but there is a relationship for today's video with both of these. The car that we're going to be showcasing today is a 1970 Chevelle LS6 convertible. It is a legitimate and verified LS6 convertible, a very, very rare car. There's rumors running around that they only made 13 of them. This one happens to be red with black stripes, black interior, and a white top. The relation to the Pontiac is the last three digits of the vehicle identification number of the Chevelle are 326, which happens to be the cubic inches of a Pontiac engine. Therefore, there's a little bit of relationship. But we're not going to hold anything against the Chevelle for having a Pontiac engine size as the last three digits of its VIN. This car is, can be classified as a barn find. Uh, although it's in a garage, it's been stored since at least 1985 with the current owner. Hasn't been on the road. He purchased it in 1977, drove it for a little bit, pulled the engine, had it rebuilt. Engine's never been put back in the car, and the car has never been back on the road. It's solid. Has, retains all its factory sheet metal. It's a very valuable car. An LS6 convertible Chevelle at auction have hammered at 350, 380. Uh, you know, walking out the door paying over $400,000 for one of these cars fully restored, heavily documented. This car does have proper documentation. I reviewed the build sheet. It is legit. And the car is a true matching numbers car. The engine, the transmission, and the rear end are all properly coded and dated for the build of this car. So, without further ado, let's show you the 1970 Chevelle LS6 convertible uh, that I inspected and just so you know this car is actually for sale I've done a very thorough examination of the car can tell you everything from date codes on the seat belts uh, to the washer fluid reservoir being proper the Julian date for the windshield wiper motor and also the power steering box so on and so forth. I have all the numbers, I have a bunch of photographs, a lot of documentation, a lot of things have been decoded at this particular point. I will be spending more time with the car to see additional things, but just so you know, the car is legitimate, the car is for sale, the car is properly documented. So if you have an interest in purchasing this car, reach out to me at an email address of mycaronmca at gmail.com. It's M-Y-C-A-R on M-C-A at gmail.com. Once again, it's mycaronmca at gmail.com. Contact me. I have all the information, a bunch of photographs, uh, above and beyond what you're going to see in today's video. So, Bob, Let's get on with it and let's show everyone out there uh, the video that I made for this particular car. Again, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Click the like button and subscribe. Thank you.
Hello everyone. Welcome to Muscle Car Appraisal's barn find of the day. It's not really a barn, it's actually a pretty nice garage. Uh, but anyway, what we have found here is a legitimate 1970 LS6 convertible. Car's been stored away for at least 35 years. I have reviewed the build sheet and the car is legitimate. It is a true LS6 convertible. Uh, the original matching numbers engine is over there. Transmission is still in the car. We'll take a peek at that. And we have some parts here and there. Ultimately, this car is going to be for sale as is. I will uh, be back to fully document this car to prove that it is matching numbers for motor, transmission, and rear end. The body is actually pretty solid. It does not need quarter panels or a trunk floor. Just needs a, a good restoration to be absolutely perfect. So, let's start off with taking a quick peek at the vehicle identification number. which we find here on the top of the dashboard. It does match the build sheet. It does match the last six of the VIN derivative on the engine, and it does match the tag inside the driver's door. I will tell you for now that the last three numbers here are 326, just like the Pontiac engine. Uh, but we're not gonna lay blame to the car for having a Pontiac engine in its, uh, in its VIN. So, uh, with that being said, I'm not going to display the entire vehicle identification number. As mentioned, this car is for sale, and when a serious and legitimate buyer does come forward, I will be able to provide every detail from my inspection. We have the Fisher body tag mounted here on the cowl with its original rosette rivets. And let's see if we can zoom in here and see what we see. Let's see if I get a little bit better lighting here, maybe. We have 70 for 1970. The 13667 is for the convertible. The 755 is for the trim of the seats, which indicates black buckets. The 06A is for June assembly. A is first week. So this is a first week of June assembly uh, where the body was built. Uh, you have your body number there. Your 75A is your paint and convertible top code. 75 is cranberry red. And the A is for a white convertible top, which as you saw before, this car definitely has a white convertible top. It happens to be the original top for the car. Uh, the current, the remaining numbers here are for the Fisher body plant. The current owner has had this car since 1977 and it has been in its present location since 1985. Let's look at some other things. The power brake booster and the master cylinder are original to the car, as is the wiper motor. 13901A. The 139 is a Julian date. It's the 139th day of the year for 1970. The A indicates first shift. The 139th day, if I remember correctly, is Tuesday, May 19th, I believe. Then you have the original steering box, which has a Julian date of 140, which would be the 140th day, which would be one day after the wiper motor, which is pretty ironic. So if that was Tuesday the 19th, this would be Wednesday the 20th. 
when the current owner purchased this vehicle, he's the second owner, by the way, he purchased it from the original owner in 1977. The car was original, had never been hit, had never been repainted, and it's never been repainted since. So what we're looking at here is factory paint. The number on the washer bottle here, Let's see if we get that. Ending in 557 is proper. You have your Delco Remy horn relay back here. And you have the voltage regulator over there. It's the original power steering pump. The original plastic inner fender wells are here. They have the proper numbers. They were made in Canada. There's the original M22. Let's see if we can zoom in. It's a fine spline transmission, has no circles on the shaft. There. I did crawl under the car previously. The VIN derivative is stamped on this transmission. So that is the original born with transmission to the car. You have uh, your proper hold downs for the hood lock cables. You have the original hood latch assembly with two horns. Your proper super sport grill with the proper emblem. If this was a Malibu grill, uh, this type of molding would also be vertical here. But this is a proper blacked out super sport grill. Uh, with the main section being painted body color. Original front bumper mounted on original brackets. Original frame mounts. A proper fuel pump. All the suspension is original. Headlights. We have a factory T3 headlight in the right front. This outer headlight and both of these headlights have been replaced, but the originals are over there. We'll take a peek at those in a minute. Uh, let's take a walk to the driver's door. Now, while I'm over here, I found a one original wheel. There are ultimately two original factory issue born with wheels for this car. You can note that the uh, valve stem hole in the trim ring is oval, which is proper. Uh, you have your Super Sport emblem and 454 on the side. Let's see what we can do about bringing some light here into the interior. Not sure how well this is going to work, but we're going to make it happen. Okay. You have an original factory issue 6500 RPM redline tachometer. Note that this tachometer has the face has three mounting screws. One at 12 o'clock and two under the needle. Okay, that works a little bit. You can see them there. Uh, this is a factory issue tachometer. The aftermarket ones have those faceplate mounting screws located at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. So this is the original born with factory 6500 RPM tachometer which is proper for an LS6 car. Uh, I have the original amp gauge. This car has not been messed with, modified, altered. It's got 57,743 miles on it. It's got a clock over there. It has your temperature and fuel gauges, your power operated top button, the original AM FM radio, cigarette lighter, this dash bezel, the grain, the black grained bezel here for the instruments is original. Aftermarket ones, if you look here, okay, these two are signal lights. Aftermarket ones have these black rings painted silver. 
Uh, so this is the original factory issue piece. Again, this car has not been altered. Uh, the dash pad is in really good condition, as are the sun visors, not ripped or torn, heavily deteriorated. They do need to be cleaned. The shifter handle has been changed. The boot and the retaining ring for that boot has been changed. As your original pedals, original door trim panels, your window cranks, the knobs on the window cranks used to be clear, but over time uh, they fade and, and yellow. Uh, original door armrest. And that's for, for both sides. This is a, you know, for a car that hasn't been on the road and has just been in a garage for such a long time, this car is, is actually in really, really good condition. Uh, the original rear view mirror. Obviously the front seat needs to be reupholstered. That's really no big deal. Split bench. back seats in in good condition again all factory original upholstery um, factory original born with seat belts you got 16 k 70 it's a robbins company belt which is proper um, made the 16th week of 1970 which predates the assembly of the car so that's proper again i did uh, Review the build sheet, and this car is legitimate. You have all the original factory work here. This quarter panel has not been replaced. The original spot welds are still in place. This quarter panel is not rusted or rotted. On convertibles, you have, I call them door blocks. You have the piece here, but you also have Turn the corner here for you. You have the, orig the original matching block here on the hinge pillar. And what that does is the piece on the door matches up with this and it prevents body flex for the car. As the original belt moldings, original PPG glass, the markings are there. I will be able to have the date codes available. Again, you know, a real serious buyer. I will be able to provide all the necessary details to ultimately make someone comfortable that they're buying a, a very proper car. So I will decode um, the bugs on the windshield there. This is a one side view mirror car. These cars did not have grills in the cowl. Uh, radiator support is proper. It has never been hit. Uh, there's no repairs anywhere in the front of this car. You do have some patchwork at the bottom of the fender. And it's the same on the other side. But right at the very beginning of the rocker panel is incredibly solid. And that runs the whole length. The front of the door is just fine not rusted or rotted. It still has a good door line and both of these doors open and close incredibly well. We'll show you on the other side that the hinges are not worn but oops, door closes quite easy, solid. We still have maintain a proper body line here and here Original door handles, lock cylinder has the original keys. Moldings here are proper, not all dented up. Has a glass back window. Obviously it needs a new convertible top, which would be expected. Stripes are proper, original factory paint. You can see the uh, areas of overspray on some of the lines. The spacing is proper here. Proper tail light. Uh, the middle of the backup light is the bubble style. And let's take a quick peek inside here. Trunk floor 
is very, very solid. Has never been worked, painted. It did have a trunk mat which has been removed and some of the backing of the mat remains. Uh, proper wiring harness. You can see one of the original tags here. No rot in either the outer fender well or the inner fender well. Trunk extensions, bottom of the quad. either side no rust no rot original solid rear body panel never been hit never been worked trunk has all the original proper spatter uh, the torque rods for the trunk lid remain as the originals and they work very well you can see that uh, once you let go of the hood it rises on its own trunk does have a couple issues uh, the trunk bumper here in the corner obviously there was a, a rodent in here uh, there's some rust issue here in the corner a uh, little bit here in the center on this side uh, is, is mostly just cosmetic um, there's nothing that's rusted or rotted through the exterior lip along the entire length is rock solid it's just fine so there's no way in the world that i would uh, change that trunk lid i would work uh, the issues underneath uh, with ease the original factory bumper this tail light's going to need to be replaced you can see the housing is, is broken here i did take a little bit of wax uh, to the bumper in this area just to see what kind of life um, it does have life left to it closes trunk lid and actually boy that closes really nice this factory paint still has life again I just took some quick cleaner wax by hand and uh, did a little spot here uh, there is quite a bit of life left to this paint the SS pad is no longer installed but uh, easily obtainable the rear valance is not rusted or rotted. Uh, you got some soot from exhaust here on this side. There's a dent in the middle. Um, but again, you, that panel is easily removed, easily repaired. Uh, then you can lay claim that uh, you, know, you have all the original metal to the car. This is the right quarter panel, rear of wheel through this area, rock solid. This car, again, factory paint. There's no Bondo through here. It's never been rusted, rotted, never been uh, repainted or worked. It's incredibly solid here at the front. Maintains a really good door gap here. Panels are straight. There is some crazing in the original factory paint, which is to be expected. There is obviously a big patch here in the back of the right fender. But believe it or not, this back edge is still factory issue. Uh, somebody with talent could uh, patch this factory issue fender, maintain this back edge, maintain a good line to the door. Uh, this rocker panel is solid through its original length. That is not a rust spot, it's a chip in the paint. And then the camera looks like there's a bubble here, but there isn't run solid all the way through this wheel opening molding has a dent but factory originals are available it does have proper hood hinges again it still has a PPG windshield in it uh, I'll decode that uh, I'm gonna ask it's got a got a dent in the quarter panel here uh, easily repairable I'm gonna ask the owner to come open come over uh, we're gonna open this door And he's going to grab the back of the door to show that there's no play in the hinges of this door whatsoever. Uh, none. The, the whole car is rocking. And then watch how nice that this door closes. I'll give it another try, Mike. Don't have to slam it. It does actually close pretty well. And uh, boom, there it is. Striker is aligned perfectly. 
does not fight the door whatsoever. The door does not drop when it's open. You have a proper line here, and just like on the other side, you have a proper line here. And they, these are factory fender gaps. The molding on the top of the fender does have uh, the noise wind strip here in the back, and it's the same as on the other side. Uh, the original posts are here on the top of the firewall on both sides. Uh, when you shut the hood, these stick through up into the hood, so if the car is ever in a front-end collision, the hood is not driven into the windshield. Uh, this stops the hood from moving back and ultimately pitches the hood like a tent. Over here you have the factory original hood. The original cowl induction, factory stripes, does have the flapper here on the back. Uh, the vacuum actuator here in the back uh, has been replaced uh, for, with an original General Motors item. Uh, it was actually installed right in the parking lot of the Chevrolet dealership where it was purchased. Uh, the original screen, you have your secondary flapper door here. This hood does have some issues. Uh, the corner here uh, in the back and then the worst of it is here. Uh, again, somebody talented could uh, repair that properly. And then you can lay claim that you have the original factory issue hood. Uh, again, never any collision work up in the front in factory original paint. And then, no pun intended, the heartbeat for this, the original matching numbers engine. Back here, uh, let's see if we get some more light there, find out. This is a the proper 512 block, see if we get some light there. There's your, your casting number, 896. 3512. It has an early casting date, K12, that's a 9. So this is an early casting in 19, or late 1969 casting, early compared to the June build of the car. Not unusual, totally unheard of, to see such an early casting. The foundry would cast blocks, put them in inventory, and, you know, they didn't run them like a grocery store where you rotated your stock to the front. I've seen many times personally myself and heard many stories of starting a new row, the engine block is placed in the back, engines are then stacked towards the front, and the foundry remains busy, and it takes a while to deplete inventory and to finally get to an engine at the back. I'm going to see if I do this without my flashlight and zoom in here. That's not so bad. Here we have the engine assembly casting. T for Tonawanda, New York, where it was built. 0522. 05 is uh, the month of May. 22 is the day. And CRV. And the CRV code is proper for LS6 4 speed, which is what this car is. And then you have your VIN derivative here, and it's a, it's a double stamp, but both are identical. And there is your 326. Again, reference, it's not a Pontiac engine, but that is the uh, proper original big block. These are obviously not the original valve covers, and this is not the proper intake, uh, but the original intake is over there and we'll take a peek at that. These are the original cylinder heads for this vehicle. You have 396 for 291. The 291 casting is proper. You, it is a square port head. You have your high performance designation there. There's your time clock for when the casting was made, which happens to be right at the very beginning of the shift. It may be off just by a couple minutes, but... Uh, and then over here you have the actual casting date, E770. 
So that is going to be May 7 of 1970. Again, that precedes not only the car, but the May 22nd assembly date of the entire engine. So obviously it has uh, roller rockers. It's a, it's a full roller, not just a roller tip. And if memory serves me correctly from my original conversation with the owner, uh, it was only the roller rockers that were installed. Uh, the other cylinder head is proper. This intake manifold is not, but we're going to take a walk over here. I've got some other parts I still need to inventory. I got a couple fan shrouds. Here's the original and proper air cleaner lid for an LS6. It is a factory original lid. It does. It is seamed here. The aftermarket ones are just flat through here, but this is a, a, an original seamed, and they are supposed to be black for an LS6. Here is the original shifter boot uh, with the mounting ring and retaining bezel. That is the original shifter arm. Uh, needs to be re-chromed, but it is the original Hurst arm. This is the original born with three core radiator. with a BQ designation here and you, you'd be if I could get a shot in there you could see well actually you can tell here that it's a three core if it was a four core this area here would not be empty so this is a 331 gear car I did crawl under the car and see that the uh, rear end housing has a CRV code which is a 331 gear the date code is also proper. It precedes the car. Uh, I have it uh, marked down. I'm not crawling under the car right now. Uh, you have an original T3 headlight. Remember, there's already one in the car. There are two more original T3 headlights here. That one just happens to be a spare, and those are some other spare parts. Uh, there's an ashtray. There's two original SS center caps two SS emblems. This one is proper for this car for a grill. Uh, that one may be for a 1968 Camaro Supersport. You have the harmonic balancer pulley there. Uh, you have a couple of fan assemblies with water pumps clutched. Uh, you have what should be the original clutch pressure plate and flywheel. There's more than one starter here in the garage that I will investigate. Uh, I took a quick look at the numbers on the fans. The part numbers are correct. I believe that one is dated 1969. This one is dated May 1970. So more than likely, this is the original fan and clutch for this car. Uh, there is a part number here on this water pump pulley, which I need to investigate. And this is the original intake for this vehicle. The casting number... 396 35 69 is proper for the LS6 application. Over here um, is the Winters Foundry stamp. It does have a heat shield uh, riveted to the bottom, which I'm going to leave alone. Uh, hides a casting date for the intake under there, but uh, I'm not going to disturb that. The original carburetor is not with this car nor are the exhaust manifolds. Um, but, and there are two original wheels. This is one of them. Uh, the other one I had uh, shown you previously. Uh, and this is the trim ring that goes with this wheel. And with the other one, you can see that it has an oval slot for the valve stem. Uh, I did uh, wipe this up a little bit. These are not tarnished in such a way that they cannot be polished and reused. They're not all dented and dinged and out of shape. Uh, just a spare grill from something else over there. It is a, a Super Sport grill, black. Again, no, uh, no moldings here in the, in the center to indicate a Malibu application. Uh, there are Krager SS wheels in the back. It's got just a steel wheel in the front. So. Again, the transmission was inspected. Uh, it is the original M22 for the car. So all in all, 
you have the original motor, the original transmission, the original rear end, the interior has never been modified, things changed, it's never been reupholstered, it has all the original glass, all the original seat belts, front and rear, the original convertible top, you know, factory sheet metal car, all the moldings are there, nothing is missing from this car. Uh, in my opinion, it would be a very easy restoration. A very solid quarter panel on the right. There's a little bit of rust here on the left behind the wheel. There's no way in the world I would ever change this quarter panel just for that small area. Uh, it does have a small dent in the, in the wheel opening, that molding that's going to need to be changed. That area right there is literally just surface rust. There's no perforation. Uh, the, the panel itself is still straight. So, you know, if this car was stripped, that is a, a very, very minor thing to deal with. Uh, the seams up here are not heavily cracked. Actually, this one just has a very minor crack, and the other side is about the same. Um, so, again, this car has never been hit. The body has never been tweaked and flexed to crack the work that fills in that seam. Rear of the trunk lid. Uh, so all in all, this car would be a very easy restoration, easy to maintain factory sheet metal all the way around. The front fenders are going to need some work. Depending on who does the work, they may want to ultimately change fenders, but that's a personal decision. Uh, factory weather strips, still pliable. You know, this car's been properly stored. Uh, driver's door is more solid. You got a little bit of work to do here on the case, uh, but again, workable. It did not bleed through to the outside. Uh, the skin edge here is, is factory. Actually, this entire edge of the skin is, is untouched. This rust did not bleed through into the skin whatsoever. Uh, it's got factory door locks in it here. This one needs a little bit of lubrication, but uh, you know, the weather strips are, are still pliable. It's got the factory sill plates with the uh, Fisher body tag. That's an original seat belt. It's actually date coded exactly the same as the other one. Uh, kick panels are, are original, as are the uh, trim panels in the back. Uh, again, this rocker panel, solid all the way through. All original, untouched factory work here. No rust or rot along this seam. Uh, a little bit of surface rust here. It's, uh, it's hard, it's not perforated, and these are just paint chips. Uh, this seam here. Hello everyone and welcome to the Muscle Car Appraisal Broadcast Studio. Bob and I are here today causing trouble. Speaking of trouble, when you combine making YouTube videos along with Murphy's Law, uh, and by the way, I really don't have anything to do with Murphy's Law, even though I share the last name. Uh, you run into problems, and most certainly I ran into an issue while making the video for this LS6 Chevelle convertible. My camera went into safe mode and just shut off trying to preserve the last bit of battery that it had left for power. So today we're going to pick up where that video leaves off and give you a few more details, show you some still photographs and provide some additional information. One other thing I'd like to mention, that video that you just watched is not edited in any way, shape or form. That is just a one shot deal. There are a couple mistakes that some of the hardcore people are gonna pick up on. Most noticeably, I made mention that the code 755 interior was for bucket seats when in fact it's for bench seats. Tons of information go through my mind while making these videos and sometimes uh, mistakes are made. I'm only human just like the rest of us. So with that being said, let's move on to some photographs for this 1970 LS6 convertible four-speed car, a very rare vehicle a lot of people have uh, 
information out there floating around that they only made 13 of these cars uh, being a convertible. Uh, again, this car is legitimate. It is documented. It is verified. There is proper paperwork. I have all that information. And when a serious and legitimate buyer steps forward and requests the information, I will be able to provide everything needed to set anyone's mind at ease that this car is legit. So reach out to me. My email address for this will be mycaronmca at gmail.com. So, Bob, why don't we move forward to a couple photographs. Here we have an example of the value of one of these cars once they are fully restored. This LS6, LS6 convertible was at the 2019 Mecham auction in Kissimmee, Florida, and the high bid was $375,000. Car did not sell at that particular moment. Can't tell you whether or not there's been a deal after the fact, because Mecham does have a bid goes on a deal where a potential buyer can approach the auction to make a deal after the car leaves the auction block. So again, this is a well-documented, verified car in fantastic condition, and it had a high bid of $375,000. The next example we have is a teal-colored car. It is a legitimate, documented LS6 convertible. Uh, this car sold at Indy 2019 for $247,500. Big difference in price, basically $100,000. And there's reasons for this. This car does not have the flapper on the cowl hood and it is a stripe delete car. And I inspected this car in person, uh, both in Florida and in Indianapolis, both at Mecham Auctions. Uh, this car, does not show in pristine number one show car condition like the black car. This car needed work, it had pain issues, it had wear and tear issues. Uh, and again, it's not a flapper hood, so it has a different air cleaner assembly on it. And you add all these things together and it brings a different price. There's a, another car which I don't have a proper photograph for. Uh, this car was at another Mecham auction. It was red with red interior and a black top, documented and pristine. This car sold for $385,000. So there's three examples that show that these cars can be uh, deep into the six-figure range. Uh, the car that we have here, as the example of what I've inspected, has not been restored. It's uh, in its original condition. Uh, it's not going to bring $350,000 plus in the condition it's in, but it's a documented, verified, matching numbers car. It's solid. It does need some work. It does need restoration to bring it to that $350,000 plus range. Uh, and in my opinion, uh, this car is a six figure car as it sits. So let's look at a couple more photographs. Uh, this is the windshield in the car. Uh, the bug is in the bottom corner showing that it is an original PPG windshield. This is one of the two 14-inch uh, SS wheels that are available for this car. Uh, the trim ring sits right behind or right next to the wheel. This is one of the four T3 headlights. This one I actually cleaned the dust off of and uh, the mounting trim ring. Whoops, we'll get back to that trim ring in a second. Oh, there it is. Uh, I took just a little bit of wax, polished it up just a little bit. It brightens right up. You don't need to buy trim rings for this restoration. Uh, these are still in good condition. Uh, just a little 
work by hand, they'll polish right up and they will be perfectly fine, even on a show car level. Getting back to the other photograph, this is the original and proper intake for the car, just showing a different side uh, and that it is a, a true square port intake, which is proper for an LS6 or any of the solid lift or big blocks. Uh, this photograph is of the left rocker panel. Just a quick shot to show that it is solid. It's not rusted. It's not bubbling or anything. This is a photograph of the tachometer in the car. In the video, I made mention that it is a factory issue tachometer, a proper 6,500 RPM red line, and the proper three mounting screws for the face, whereas the aftermarkets are at three o'clock and nine o'clock. This is a factory issue uh, with three screws. Took a picture hoping to maybe get a little better visibility of those mounting screws. Uh, didn't work. I did not wipe down the, the lens on the dashboard. I can if someone wants me to go back um, and do so because I am gonna be back for this car to verify a few more things. Uh, do a little bit of work here and there, a little bit of historical inspection stuff. And I'm gonna bring a couple different uh, cleaner waxes with me because I'm very curious as to how much life is left in the paint. There are some things where the paint is just faded a bit and there are some spots where it's dirty, uh, some spots are oxidized. So I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit more presentable to not only satisfy my curiosity, but also the curiosity of any potential buyer. Uh, this photograph is standing at the rear of the car with the trunk lid open. It shows the factory seam work of the quarter panel to the upper rear body. And it also shows that the bottom corner of the trunk lid does not have any rust and rot in the corner and just a real solid piece up front there along the edges. And there you have it, folks. That should wrap things up for now. We thank you for watching the video. For anybody that happens to click the like button and the subscribe button, we most certainly appreciate that as well. Again, reach out to me at mycaronmca at gmail.com if you have any questions. And I can provide any information needed to seriously interested buyers. This car is not for everyone. It is a very valuable car the way it sits. Again, six figures in my opinion. The car is for sale and the car is most certainly easily restorable. Back to a factory appearing, matching numbers appearance. Uh, and it'll be a very, very valuable car once it's properly restored. Oh, and another thing that I picked up on, I made mention that the engine was not rebuilt. Well, a little further investigation and discussion with the vehicle owner, uh, the engine in fact had been rebuilt and it had never been placed back in the car. And that engine has been sitting on the stand since at least 1985. Uh, so somebody's gonna wanna do a disassembly, check things, make sure everything is proper, touch things up a little bit internally as needed, uh, and then move forward uh, with reassembly and installation back into the car. Uh, I will get some specifics on the engine. I'm gonna bring my boroscope camera with me and get it in a spark plug hole, see if I can see numbers on the top of a piston. Uh, I am at this particular time not gonna be doing en any engine disassembly. If somebody is serious enough and ponies up the money, it's something I can certainly do. I'm very familiar with engine disassembly as well as reassembly, and I can get anything taken care of. So hope you all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and see you again on the next one.